Today is the day that I have been waiting for for a long time. This is probably gonna be the coolest mod on this car. We are going to make the stock exhaust fit on our turbo 8th gen Honda Civic we got a three inch electronic cutout, which is so freaking cool. So this electronic cutout right here is basically a valve that is gonna open and dump the exhaust gas straight out right there. And then from here, it's gonna go back to the factory exhaust. And then we get to wire this connector here to a module where in the press of a button, we can make the Honda ridiculously loud and we can have fun with it. So this exhaust is gonna kind of be the best of both worlds. It can be quiet when there's a cop next to me at a red light. And then whenever we wanna do pulls, we just open the exhaust valve. And now we got this thing dumping open down pipe. It's basically gonna sound like a hood dump, but it comes from the bottom of the car. We are going to kick things off by spraying some penetrating fluid on all these broken and seized bolts and then all the thread holes, get them nice and lubed up because I have a feeling that this is going to be a nightmare, but we are hoping for the best. These are only 12 mil bolts, so let's see if these break. We're just gonna send it right away and freaking impact them because why not? Okay, well, this seems like it's working pretty good. Let's go, baby. Flip this puppy over and go for round two. I guess I kind of didn't realize that you got to evenly take these off. Hey, yo at least we got a good muffler. I'll have to clean this up with a little bit, all this old gasket material, but that ain't bad. Since I'm procrastinating taking that broken bolt out though, I am gonna clean all this garbage gasket material off the flange. You know what would actually be a much better idea? If I took this, threaded it in there, and then I hammer that. And that worked like a charm. Now, both of these flanges should fit up real nice. Look at that. It's perfect. Let's move on to the next section of the exhaust, which we need to fab up before we go over to start welding, which is the three bolt flange. To start, I'm gonna get this whole surface cleaned up because she is crusty. So we got this flange all dialed in. I got it nice and cleaned up. Nice and flat surface to seal to. Now I get to show you guys the adapter that's gonna make this all come together to work with our exhaust cutout. Cause I want everything to be V-bend except for this connection to the stock exhaust. So I picked up this little adapter here. I will link this in the description for you guys if you wanna do this same mod. It is a three bolt, two and a quarter inch to three inch V-band adapter. So I can connect a regular Amazon or eBay V-band flange to this, clamp it, she'll seal, and then this three bolt will bolt right up to the stock exhaust with a gasket that fits perfect. And I will also link in the description because I got all this stuff off Amazon and it is super cheap. The only thing that I had to do was I took a carbide bit and as you can see, these holes are kind of oblonged on this flange. This thing doesn't fit perfect on the stock exhaust. It's a little bit shallow, but if you just oblong out those holes, you can then get M8 by 125 bolts right through. This flange will bolt up. You get a gasket in between there, but we got this stock exhaust totally prepped out here and essentially ready to go in the car. We had everything loaded up, ready to go over to the fab shop, which is my dad's workshop. So we're gonna get a good old cold start for the boys and drive this car over there. Hopefully it's not dead again. It is stone dead. All right, I see how it's gonna be today. This is the problem with having project cars, boys. These things sit for freaking weeks on end and the batteries are always dead. So we're gonna use our good old Oxido battery booster and boost this thing. This booster pack 
has been saving my butt lately, boys. You guys gotta get one of these things, it's awesome. It's got like a tire pump on it and stuff too. At the track, we're gonna be able to just bring this to set our tire pressures. It's got a automatic tire pressure setting on it. So you can set the tire pressure to 35 PSI on the screen here and then it'll stop automatically when the tire hits 35. You guys can use the code DANIEL15 at checkout. Get yourself 15% off these booster packs. They are a lifesaver, man. Let's get her fired up. Ooh. She's running like a bag of dicks there. Oh, this thing sounds so good. Oh, it smells good too. I love that no cat smell. In the last video I posted, it was literally spring. There was no snow on the ground. And now look at it outside. It was 15 degrees outside. And now a couple days later, it's covered in snow on the ground again. But let's get this thing pulled into the big old heavy duty shop where my dad has a welder. I'm gonna need to buy a welder one day so I can do this stuff in my house. Okay, we got the car all jacked up in the other shop now. We got that brand new gasket and gasket kit to bolt up right there, which is just literally a stock gasket kit. Stock two and a quarter inch exhaust all the way up to our three bolt to three inch V-band flange that we bought off Amazon. And then I'm gonna have this three bolt gasket right here in between that. I just grabbed some M8 by 125 hardware to bolt that up. Then we're gonna have our electronic cutout. Then to connect this to this V-band flange, I bought two V-band sets off Amazon. So this is a three inch V-band. It just goes over top of the pipe there. And then I gotta weld a bead right here. This is gonna V-band up to that flange right there. And then we're gonna put another V-band on this side of the cutout. And that is gonna go to the exhaust that we got hanging out under there, which is also a three inch flange. So to start this off, just get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna get the full stock exhaust completely installed so that it's sitting up on the hangers. So I know exactly where we need to kind of cut everything to meet up perfectly to that stock exhaust. And then we're gonna tack all of the V-bands on with everything bolted up underneath the car. And then we're gonna pull all the pipes out. And then I'm gonna get it fully welded on the bench with the V-band clamps tightened. And then we'll see about wiring in the cutout today. I probably won't have time because it is getting late already. I got a late start on this. But this wire is gonna need to plug into an extension harness that came in the Evil Energy Kit, which I'll also link in the description. I got that off Amazon. It was like 150 bucks or something like that. It comes with all the hardware and the gaskets you need to bolt this right up to the cutout piece here. I wish I had a TIG welder, but I don't. So this is all gonna be MIG, which sucks because it rusts so easy, but I might lay some high temp paint over the welds just to kind of try to mitigate the rust a little bit. And for those of you that are gonna hate on it being MIG welding in the comments because it's not getting proper penetration and it's not back purge and all that, I don't care, dude. It's a budget build. We're just trying to make it work for cheap. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get it. Let's show you guys what we're working with here. We got the sock exhaust installed. The muffler is bolted up with all of our new hardware and the new gasket. All the stock hangers are in. It looks really, really nice and factory. Then when you get up to the front here, we got our three bolt to three inch V-band adapter bolted to the exhaust with the gasket on there. And if you look inside the pipe, it is actually centered pretty good, which is nice. And then now our next step is gonna be to fit this guy in here somehow, which is gonna be hard because the downpipe starts to bend right at the length of this. So we are gonna need to lop off a portion of this right here, probably back by the flange as close as we can get so that we can still weld the V-band on there without not being able to weld past this flange here. And then we're definitely gonna cut a little bit off this side too. But the problem with that is we're welding these to V-bands, so these cuts need to be perfectly straight. And I'm gonna cut this guy as close to this weld as I can to get as much clearance as we possibly can so that we don't have to cut after this bend. The other thing that you guys are probably wondering by looking at this is how are you gonna fit that while running this Rear O2 sensor? If I'm being honest, I have not run a Rear O2 sensor on a single car that I've built. You don't need them. All these Rear O2 sensors do is monitor catalyst efficiency. So they're just monitoring. If you have a cat here, it's gonna monitor the oxygen content in the exhaust after the cat. So honestly, 
you don't need it at all. And we already got the factory wideband up there and we got an AEM wideband right behind the turbo. So if I need to cut the exhaust right here to make this fit, I'm perfectly fine with that. And we do got the other V-band connection up there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can kind of see the clamp up there. That allows this exhaust to pivot a decent amount. And the factory exhaust, when it bolts up, actually sits closer to the left side of the shield. So we should be able to make this work as long as we cut it back here. Then we are gonna get the V-band welded on the cutout side and then we'll bolt it up to here. And then we'll know our exact length where we need to weld the V-band to the downpipe. So with that being said, let's get this downpipe yanked out of here. We're gonna get her chopped off right there. And then let's get this cutout cut down as short as we possibly can. boys time to get the first v-band just tacked on here because i'm trying to fit this thing up underneath the car and this one keeps falling off so this is one i won't have to adjust much so we're just going to tack this guy on here and then i can go fit everything up underneath the car we'll do one tack on that side and we'll do one tack on this side just to make sure it's not going to fall off Beautiful. Now let's go give her a test fit. This cutout is gonna go into the V-band right here, and then this V-band is going to meet up with the downpipe. Now that I tacked this one on, and it's not gonna fall off all the time. So we just gotta get her nice and set in there. Oh, we are pretty close to bang on, boys. Depends where we want the exhaust to sit, though. The cutout is gonna sit on this side, I think. So we don't want that to be scraping on the ground. Might need to tack both of these guys on if I'm being honest. And then what we're gonna have to deal with is this downpipe connection because the downpipe can move so much from that upper V-band that we gotta decide where we're gonna fit it up. So I don't want it to be hanging too low. I want it to be tucked up pretty good. So let's go get this thing tacked on. Once again, we are gonna tack on both sides. We officially got two V-bands tacked onto our exhaust cutout. So let's go get it on the car and see how she fits. But before we hop under there, I do want to mention the V-band clamps that came with these Amazon V-bands are absolutely terrible. The bolts got literally halfway down the stud and just completely binded up. And I tried to back them back off. They wouldn't come off. So I had to break them off in order to get my V-bands back out. But luckily I had two spare V-bands from my ETS kit from the Subaru. So we're using those because those are actual quality V-bands. Those Amazon ones suck. I don't know if you guys know this, but I absolutely love V-band clamps. They make exhaust so easy. And if you buy Amazon parts, you can do it on a budget. Stock, the exhaust sits off to the left and I would actually like it to sit off to the left because then we got more room for this cutout. Just, I don't want the clamps to be hitting the frame. Oh boy. We gotta take this downpipe out and do some eyeball in here. I need a Sharpie. So she sits right there. We need to draw a line with a Sharpie right around where we need to grind it down to for this to sit flush. And hopefully this works. Cause if it doesn't, I don't know what to do. Honestly though, worst case scenario, what we could do is just take this three inch pipe that I got, which was a cutoff and weld it on there to give it another straight edge. So we always got a backup plan just in case this doesn't work. I ain't no professional fabricator or anything, especially when I'm not even doing measurements. I'm just guessing at this point, but hey, I remember guessing on tests in high school and pulling like 80, 90%. So sometimes guessing works, boys. Just throwing that out there. All right, now just to test fit this to make sure the V-band goes over it and it doesn't shit what i do wrong so i need a wicked angle out of this v-band and when you angle it it ends up being an oblong flange and it's bigger than three inches it's just shitty because i don't have like a 45 degree elbow or something like that here to make this work so i'm trying to make the v-band flange fit on an oblong hole 
All right, boys, it is a couple days later since that last clip, and I had to order a 45 degree bend off Amazon. I ordered a 45 and a 90, but ended up only needing the 45. And we finally got the exhaust all tacked up underneath the car, and I'll show you guys what she looks like because I'm excited. All we have left to do is weld this thing. So we cut the downpipe way, way back, had to kind of cut it at an angle here so that it fit up with the 45 and then the 45 fits into the V-band there. And then we got our V-band tacked on over here, which I got to pull off so we can weld this V-band. We got to weld the backside of this V-band, backside of this V-band, and then weld this flange right here. Now I do have a little bit of a gap right there, which kind of sucks. I do like to have really, really nice fitment when I'm fabricating stuff. But unfortunately in this case, just the way the downpipe goes, cutting that at an angle and trying to fit the 45 in there, it was more of like a 35 degree bend, I would say, not a 45. And I didn't have that. So we're working with what we got. So we're just gonna use a little bit of filler in there and we're MIG welding, so it should be pretty strong. So I'm gonna go ahead now and time-lapse through getting this whole thing welded up out of the car, and then we're gonna get it bolted up with the exhaust cutout and everything. And that exhaust cutout is in the perfect location to run this wire through the grommet where the factory rear O2 sensor sits, which is unreal. This is gonna turn out so clean. But I'll show you guys that once we get there. For now, let's get this thing all welded up and let's see if I still got it. I'm wearing my old Nate shop smock here for welding so I don't burn through my something cool hoodie. I'm kind of scared to weld this if I'm being honest. Let's get it. We finally got both flanges welded 100%. They are ready to go back in the car. And I was gonna do a sick edit and show you guys the welds, but if I'm being honest, they're not that nice. And you guys need to know that that's okay, as long as it's functional. This is all the CX Racing welds. Those are all machine welds with a TIG welder. And then here's my MIG welds, which honestly, they ain't too bad. I kind of still got it. Some of them are worse in different spots than others. Like you can see right here, it's not quite as nice because there was a tack in the middle, so you kind of got to stop. I can't do it all in one shot. I went ahead and did a couple stitches on the inside of the V-band just to make sure it's not going to blow off the pipe because I did not back purge the pipe or anything like that, so I'm just reinforcing it. And it's funny I did that because after I looked at the CX Racing pipes and they did the same thing. They tacked it on the backside. Well, actually, this isn't the CX Racing. This is Evil Energy. Evil Energy tacked it at the back. On CX Racing, they didn't. So I actually had to go ahead and backstitch the CX Racing flange just to make sure that that thing doesn't blow apart like my ETS kit did on my Subaru. So now that we got all of that together, we did wire wheel and MIG weld on stainless steel, which unfortunately means it's gonna rust. So I wanna let you guys know that we are gonna paint this with some high temp paint eventually. Today, it is Easter long weekend right now, so I don't have time to go through and paint all this. And I wanna get it on the car and see what this sounds like. And I need to get a video up for you guys this week. So we're gonna get this completely slapped in the car. I'm gonna try and get the electronic cutout wired in. Not fully wired, but I just wanna test out the sound, what it's like to open the valve and shut the valve and make sure it all works. And then I gotta get going to Easter dinner. So let's get this all slapped in the car, get the electronic cutout installed, which is going to consist of this butterfly valve here, a V-band to a three bolt flange adapter, which is gonna bolt right up to here. And then everything else is completely V-band. Oh my God, we did it. This is so sick. Damn, look at this freaking setup, boys. We got the downpipe coming down from up there, our little 45 degree that's welded to a V-band. V-band to the whole exhaust cut out there that Y's off. V-band on both sides to a V-band to three bolt adapter, which goes back to the factory exhaust, which goes all the way back to the back of the car. The only thing that I'm not a fan of is how low this exhaust kind of hangs. It should be sitting a little bit higher. I'm actually curious if it threw off our uh, alignment of our exhaust tip, but I haven't gone back there. We're gonna find that out in a sec. That's always fixable, but there's a really good shot of the whole setup for you guys. Another thing that's really cool is if you take a peek up there, 
You can see our whole electronic valve. It is nice and tucked up in the frame there so it doesn't hang down at all. And I electrical taped the connection up for the exhaust cutout just so that it doesn't ever come unplugged. Then I took the grommet off of the O2 sensor harness, cut it, and then ran the wire for the electronic cutout through the O2 sensor grommet so that it looks nice and OEM. And this is a damn clean install, boys. I am super happy with how this came out. And honestly, it doesn't hang down that much lower than the factory exhaust would. So we'll see how she goes when it comes to rubbing. The other thing I wanna show is the front AFR sensor is plugged in. I just zip tied it to that little bracket there, which you guys can kind of see in that corner, which turned out to be super clean. And it's plugged right into the factory location. I decided to walk to the back of the car for the first time since we started this. And I should have came back here before. Looking from up high, it's not really that noticeable. But when you get down here, you can definitely notice that that tip is just the slightest bit crooked, which that doesn't take much. We can definitely straighten that out, but not today because for one, I don't have time. And for two, we need a cold start for the boys to hear what this thing sounds like on the stock exhaust. So I gotta show you guys the setup that we got going on here inside of the car, just temporary until I get this wired in nicely to an out fuse. For now, what we got is the whole harness is coming out from under here, down from that O2 sensor. We got this adapter plugged in to right here, just like that, which goes to a switch, which is right here, which we can do to turn it on or off. And then that whole harness goes down into our cigarette lighter plug, which is nice that it's all teed together. I can also plug it in up there, but my gauges are there. So I'm gonna plug it in right back here to make this kind of out of my way. So when we start this at the beginning, it is gonna be super quiet, all stock exhaust, two and a quarter inch, nice and sleeper. And then when I press the button or open the switch on the valve, it should open up and it should be like open downpipe loud. All right, boys, this is it. I gotta hook the booster pack up, our good old Oxido booster pack, and then we are going to start this thing. I am super nervous. Let's do it, boys. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, dude. Bro, that is so quiet. That is insane. Oh, I'm fogging up my lens. This is insane, boys. I'm standing right next to the exhaust right now and you literally can't hear anything. It is completely silent. You just sit here and have a completely normal conversation. It sounds like a bone stock Civic, dude. And now let's see if the remote works first. If I press open, do I gotta hold it? Oh, maybe the remote doesn't work. Let's see what's going on. I'm pressing the button on the remote, but the module's not communicating. I might have to wire in the actual other module in order to get the remote to work or sync it up. I'm not sure yet. We'll figure that out in a bit. For now, we got this switch. So I'm gonna come in here and hold this switch and we'll set you guys up back here to see what she sounds like. Bro, this is so quiet. This is nuts. All right, I'm gonna press the button. Let's see if this works. No. No, no way. All right, let's get it. No way, dude. Okay, that's open and then now let's shut it. She seals right up and now let's give it a little rev with the stock exhaust. Bro. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. We have a sleeper Honda, boys. Oh my God. I gotta do it again just cause it's cool. All right, open. Ain't no way. <laughs> this is so sick, dude. And even when the dump is open, look at this you can still see exhaust coming out of the back. It's just not as heavy because the rest of it is fricking dumping right there, dude. Let's press the button and see if we can watch it close. Oh, no way, no way, no way, no way. You can literally see the valve. That is so sick, dude. Let's watch this one more time just because that was so cool. Open. Oh, that's so sick. And close. That is actually 
the coolest mod I think I have ever done to a car. The fact that this thing is still running right now and you guys can hear me talk like we're having a normal conversation, but when I want to, I can just dump that shit straight out the downpipe. Oh my God, I'm so hyped. This is so sick. And honestly, what time is it right now? It is currently 4.39 p.m. My Easter dinner started at 3 p.m., but I had to finish this video off for you boys because we needed a cold start. So that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about the electronic exhaust cutout. We still gotta lube up the whole butterfly valve and everything and get it all set up, but that'll be next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions about how to build this setup or what parts I use, I'll leave them all in the description and leave your questions in the comments. I will try and respond to all of them. So peace out, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am freaking hyped on this setup. I will see you guys in the next video.